Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at hm.com. The holidays are a time to feel and create joy. And what could be more joyous than the look on her face as she unwraps a stunning new jewelry piece from Blue Nile? How about getting 50% off your purchase? Blue Nile offers premium quality, priced below traditional retail. Their online experts are available 24-7 to answer any questions. And make sure you've picked the perfect gift. For a limited time, you can get 50% off at BlueNile.com. That's 50% off at BlueNile.com. Apple Gift Card is a practical gift that unlocks a world of entertainment and fun. You can send it via email or give a physical card to your loved ones. Your friends and family can spend it on their favorite Apple services, including Apple subscriptions. Apple Gift Card can be used to buy all things Apple. Products, accessories, apps, games, movies, TV shows, iCloud Plus, and more. Visit apple.com for details and to send Apple Gift Cards to your friends and family this holiday season. Saturday. Christmas comes early. Unbelievable! Welcome to this incredible scene. Bills. To the end zone! Chargers. It's a touchdown! An exclusive NFL game. This is fantastic! Live in primetime. Wow! Only on Peacock. With a Christmas gift to their fans. They're having some fun now. Bills versus Chargers. Saturday, 7.30 Eastern. Exclusively on Peacock. Welcome back to another episode of Keeping Current with Kansas City. This is Thad Bell from the Kansas City Soccer Journal. I'm still getting used to that. I have with me, as usual, Daniel Sperry from the Kansas City Star, and we have a special guest today. Hopefully she'll be around a lot more. Jillian Carroll Latrinko. That's right. <laughs> I'm, we I'm have never, the last name there. <laughs> I'm never good with names, so I always have to be cautious. Yeah. No, it's perfect. Well said. In case anybody hasn't noticed, Jillian is back in Kansas City, uh, doing stuff with the current, uh, on the, on the broadcast team, color play by play, a little bit of everything. Yeah. So I'm, I'm mostly color analyst. And then my guy, Dave Borchert sticks to the play by play on the radio, which you guys can catch our stream. If you go on the KC current app. Um, so check that out. But then on the, we do have some televised games as well. And I will be both analyst and host. We've got a heck of a team this year. Um, as far as some local broadcast talent and some national talent as well. Cool. Uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing you back here in Kansas City and, and seeing you on a regular basis. Thank you. It's very, very good to be home. And it's crazy to see the growth, not only in the game, but the city. Uh, yeah, could I could not be happier to be home. We're very thankful that you've joined our podcast too tonight <laughs> because we keep, you know, we're two white males in a space that is dominated by white males and we need less of us so uh thank you for joining us <laughs> for real um and uh helping us talk about the uh, the wonderful team that we've got here in kc yeah no i appreciate that and also i on a on a personal level um certainly appreciate that but also appreciate all the work that both of you do and have done for years um it's it's as important as well but what you're doing now by bringing in a female voice and allowing it, allowing myself to have um, a platform is great as well. So thank you. Not only important to have a female voice, but also important to have a female voice that actually knows what she's talking about. So <laughs> a very smart one. <laughs> I mean, I'm a product of, of the game that, that um, you know, right here in KC. So I feel very blessed to be able to talk about it. That's for sure. Yeah. I've, I don't know how long it's been since I've known you, but it's, it's been totally revolved around soccer. So yeah. I remember the first time I met you, Thad, I walked into the soccer dome covering the Kansas City Comets. At the time, I think they were still Missouri Comets. Um, yeah. Walked in there and you you were right there. And 
you haven't stopped talking since that. You've just continued. I'm, just I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, but it, so I think that goes back to like 2015, I want to say. Somewhere. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's It's been a while, but I just remember, I, I do remember that first time we met and I was like, okay, who's this person? Why yeah. is she asking me all these questions about the comments? <laughs> yeah, it's funny because at that time, I, even though, you know, growing up here and, you know, loving the game, et cetera, working for sporting. Well, I hadn't worked for sporting just yet, but huge Wizards fan, all the things. I really didn't know much about the comments. So the reason why I gravitated toward the organization was really, to be very honest, was because they were also owners of the women's team that was in the city at the time, obviously. So, um, so yeah, so I had a lot of learning to do about that organization. And like I said, you were right there with all the info for me. <laughs> Hopefully I was nice and polite and gave you reasonably good answers. Yeah, yeah for sure. For sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, we will talk more about you, but the show is about the current and uh, so far 0 and 2 and looking to get better. Mm -hmm. uh, just what, what have you seen from the last, well, the first two games that maybe they could be doing better? Yeah, it's tough right now. Uh, any team out of the gate, we all know that they're going to be trying to form their identity and the evolution has to start from game number one. You add to that, not having your full personnel from the first kick. That's, that's difficult, right? So um, two games in uh, navigating typical stressors of new season. Uh, that's one thing, but then adding in the layer of the injuries, it's been tough, right? I will say there have been flashes in both match matches, excuse me, where I've gotten really excited about the potential of this crew. Um, I would say in the North Carolina game, some positive that stuck, stuck out to me. Um, really cool to see the heat up top <laughs> with the three that got the start that game. Of course, Michelle Cooper probably leading that pack, but I was super impressed after match one um, with Gabby in the back. I was really pleased to see her composure, her character come through. Um, you know, they went right at her right away with Caroline. There was no question about it. They went right at her. And I think she was a little stunned initially, but she answered back, in my opinion. I thought she did a good job. And then, of course, looking at the Portland match, I mean, that's a tough matchup. Uh, mm -hmm but I'm sure you guys feel the same way. Second half, was it maybe minutes 50 to 70? I would say yep. we, owned, you know, Kansas City current owned that 20 minute stretch and looked very good. Uh, There's a little bit of spunk, a little bit of fire, obviously throwing in Dabinia. It was fun. Um, so I think, you know, yeah, dropping two matches is not how you want to start the season, but certainly positives coming out of each of the matches. Daniel, anything you want to add to that? No, I was just going to, I mean, I agree with her that, that, that 20 minute stretch against Portland was um, <clears throat> a little bit of getting back to what they were really good at last year, which mm -hmm. was turning over teams in the middle third and catching them in the counter. Um, and it, it was the press at the opportune times when they were out of, when, you know, Portland was maybe throwing a few numbers forward and uh, they, they found those transitional moments and were able to play those one twos. And like she said, you know, they, they got a goal that they arguably should have scored too uh in that time that you know there's a couple at the back door um that did not get finished and i think those are finishes that you expect to be made at some point um but you know i it, it's good to see that they got those looks it good it's good to see that they were generating those chances against um you know still i i know the current roster is looks really great on paper we haven't quite seen it yet on the field but like the, the Thorns roster is the best in the league and what I've seen on the field. And so for them to go at that defense and dominate that 20 minute stretch like they had um, was really good. Um, but I also think too later in that match, you saw the experience of the Portland team just kind of uh, hit the brakes on everything. They managed possession for about 10 minutes there at the, after that 70 minute mark, I the current, but could barely get a touch on the ball and they put that game to bed. And that's what experienced champions do. Um, and so I am looking forward to seeing, you know, I think you're right. We saw 10, maybe five, 10 minutes of like glimpses that we really liked in that North Carolina game that we said, that's good. And same thing, you know, a little bit more so in this, I think now you're looking, can you put together, you know, a, 
a, a, lo- a much longer stretch of that. Okay, that's kind of what I expect out of that team um, in, in this upcoming match this weekend. Yeah, and just piggybacking off of that, I find it so interesting. Coach Potter is not shy about still addressing these athletes as people first. And as I think you guys both have heard multiple times, you know, we'll be asking, how is Cooper settling in? How is Mimi Larson settling in or or on the field? And he, his first, without hesitation, his first answer always is geared toward, well, as a person, she's got to get settled. She's away from home, you know, maybe across the country, you know, uh, as a person, she's got to feel settled first before she can find her way. And I appreciate that. And I've, I've covered coaches that bring that up every now and again, or it, it, it kind of gets presented and they can jump on it, but he's very consistent with that. And I'm sure you guys have noticed it too. Um, I, I appreciate that as far as being a former athlete and a coach that is important. Um, and I also just appreciate that. And I know that this is his Potter isms, but like day (laughs) one on the journey, right? Like all the things that he always says, but, uh, but I do appreciate him addressing like the, their people, they have to get life good and whole before they can contribute on the field. And I do think we're seeing more and more of it. Um, you know, there's some major uh, potential for the players, the new faces that we see. Um, and I just think every match we're going to see more of it, you know? Yeah. I, I think maybe, sorry to interrupt that, but last year we kind of saw the same thing with Claire Lavoge too where they slowly brought her in 30, 60, 90. It was the game where she was given, I think, like a whole half actually um, against uh, North Carolina, where she, she she made that wonder goal from midfield, and you were like, oh, wow, okay. Um, but it took her, I mean, she was in training for a few weeks. She was trying to maybe get fit a little bit off of, you know, not being kind of being in preseason mode with her team in France. But um, <clears throat> at the same time, like the, that, that deal took a while, to get done and get her over here. And there was a very clear care about the person, but once she was started to get integrated on the field, it was pretty quick. It was about a game or two before she was like, Oh, okay. We've got a very, very good player here. And so I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing that, you know, with uh, a player like Mimi Larson, who we talked to today, um, uh, because I think she's got a ton of quality and that's, it'll, it'll be interesting to see what types of leaps she takes in her game over the coming weeks. Yeah. You said a lot of what I was about to say, Daniel, which is what mm-hmm. you always do. Uh, no, I, I appreciate it. But before I, I know we only have Jillian for a little bit tonight because of some time constraints. Uh, before you go, we we got some bad news today. We, we kind of, I was kind of worried about it before this, but uh, Alex Loetta is uh, out. Yeah. We don't know for how long. Uh, Potter said uh, at least a couple weeks basically Mm -hmm. and we don't know exactly what the issue is but it was an issue that apparently they chose to take care of now instead of letting it rest or or letting it wait and then maybe playing on it and getting worse so uh, we don't know exactly what it is we're still trying to find out that's difficult but that's a big blow because they they had they don't have a you know alex was filling in for des and things like that so How do they address that going forward? Do you think this week or the next couple of weeks? Yeah, it's definitely, um, you know, always bad news. It's always tough to hear that, Uh, you know, but you said add it to the, the list of uh, injuries the team is facing right now. It's tough. I've, I am very excited. I don't think this is necessarily the answer, so to speak, but I think they've got a heck of a player in Ryland Childers. And why I say I don't think she's necessarily the answer just yet, because I think she's very young still. Um, I do think that she's getting great exposure at training um, and that she could potentially plug herself into that hole. Uh, But yeah, it's going to be one of those things where there's just going to be shifting around. And I think thus far, the team has already had to do some of that. So I think everyone is going to be up for it. Um, I don't think it's time to freak out or anything like that. I think, you know, you drop the first two matches, you learn from them, you move forward. Hopefully we'll see some of the other injured players come back um, in the next few matches. I'm hopeful. Uh, But yeah, no, it's tough. It's got to be tough on her too. um, As far as what 
made them make the decision now to go ahead and address it. Um, maybe it was getting worse. You, you just never know. Um, but yeah, it's going to be tough for them. But, you know, they are facing a team who also is down a huge piece in obviously Chicago Red Star losing Mal Swanson. Yep. So what well, is just so tough too. But, but yeah, I think it's going to be next man up. I think it's going to be we're versatile, um, that type of mentality. And um, again, maybe this is an opportunity for some youth to step on the field, get some more minutes, maybe move some people around. Yeah, I, I, as Daniel knows, I've talked up Ryland uh, pre-drafted yeah. during the draft quite a bit just because having seen her play, but yeah. I'm not sure if she's quite ready to step into that role just I yet. Know. But uh, I think she could be that that solution in the future, just maybe not just yet. Uh, yeah. I know, like I think Shar has kind of filled in that role some. Uh, we don't I know about what Vanessa. I saw, I'll just say I liked what I saw from Shar in training today a lot, and I think we've she talked about a bigger role earlier in the year and. I, I liked what I saw in the match against Portland. I thought she handled that for her first big minutes um, as a pro, really. And for mm -hmm. a player who's used to being on the field all the time when she was at Oregon, um, I, you know, I, I'm curious to see what happens when she's in a role where she has a little bit more control over the midfield because of what we saw in training today and what we've been hearing about how she's been doing in the preseason and some of that stuff kind of makes me intrigued to see uh, how much of an answer she's going to be because I feel like she's got to be the first name up uh, in in that discussion at least. <clears throat> She, I thought she looked very strong in that patch against the mm -hmm. Thorns. I thought she was a critical piece to that, actually, through the middle. Um, looked really smooth, and I think it was everyone pretty much on the field just started really just owning every 50-50 ball, coming back for more. Um, but she was pretty critical in, in that span that we talked about earlier. I think she... Mm -hmm. I think she should be the answer. I think she could be the answer, excuse me. Um, and if so... If she played like she did against the Thorns, she'd rise to the occasion, which is awesome to see. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was just say, I just feel like she ha she has makes calm and calming decisions when she has the ball. Mm -hmm. It calms it calms out some moments that can be really hectic, and she she just knows what to do. Whether it's the pass, the dribble, the turn, those are the kind of things that I'm like I'd like I like to see out of that defensive midfield spot. Yeah, she's got a good little finesse about her. You know, the the touches are nice. Uh, it's never a frantic pass. Um, I agree with you on that. She's calming. I think that's a good word for her, actually. Which is a lot what the current have needed uh, last year and this year is they needed a they needed a more calming influence than not to be so frenetic because they tended to lose the ball when they were more frenetic. Mm -hmm. I like that word today. Um, <laughs> it's a good one too. <laughs> but I I've been a fan of Shar since last year when she seemed to always be kind of an impact coming off the bench. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, she may not have always got the assist, but she was almost always involved in the play leading up to a, a goal that was needed for the team to make their comeback or, or tie it up or take the lead. So I've, I've been a very appreciative of her game since last year. And I do want to see how she has evolved more this year and her second year. So I, I do think we'll see a lot more of her and hopefully she does well. Yeah. All right. I, I, I'm not trying to kick you out, Jillian, but I'm just trying to be no, very I, respectful of your time. I so appreciate it. I have a 4 a.m. wake up call, so I am going to duck out. <laughs> so this is for uh, one of your other jobs, right? Yes. Yeah, so catch us on KCTV 5, 9 a.m. hour. But of course, that means you have to get there way too early. Um, <laughs> yeah, my friend Bill and I and Grace, uh, Bill Hurlbrink and Grace Chapin, we do a lot of lifestyle focused content there. We talk about the current just about every day, every other day, probably. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do appreciate uh, popping on tonight, though, guys. Thank you for having me. And we hope to have you on as regularly as you have time to do, because I know you have this gig. You still coach. You are still a very, very active person in the soccer community, besides everything we've already talked about. So It's exciting, man. I want to stay a part of it as long as they'll let me. So I'm around. But, <laughs> but no, I'm going to hop off. I do appreciate it. And uh Looking forward to the match. It should be a good one. All right. We'll see you. Well, I guess we'll see you next week, but. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Thanks. You too. Well, it's fun having Jillian on. It is. It's nice to have someone that I feel like, okay, I, this is no disrespect to you, Thad, but someone that I feel like I got to, I got to jump off because we have a third person and I can not rant as much <laughs> because they have yeah. to get their thoughts in too. 
Yeah, thanks, man. Um, <laughs> no, it was good to have her on, and uh, again, to have have it a, a female voice, but uh, a voice that knows and respects soccer. And uh, we've had some others on, and we love all of them. Mm-hmm. I, I, I hope to have Jillian on regularly, if not every week. So, yeah, me too. All right, anything else from today that you wanted to chat about? Um, let's see. We did uh, just kind of a a little general from training Davinia was very active training hard yep. looked good uh Vanessa was training hard looked good probably not 90 minute fit so mm-hmm. I would I know you you told me earlier you didn't think she would start I don't know if maybe she would start and not finish uh yeah I I I don't know if she'll start it doesn't see I mean we're talking about a player that hasn't played a preseason minute. Um, it just seems like even with Dabinia, their first action, she got 30 minutes uh, and most of it was just chasing the ball around. Um, so, I'm, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Dabinia starts this weekend um, just because of where she was at beforehand. Um, we're talking about now like almost three weeks back in full training uh, and already 30 minutes under her belt. Um, so I, I expect her – to probably start in this match. Um, I'd be shocked if she didn't, to be honest, um, which probably helps alleviate some of the questions about the midfield. But Di Bernardo, I'd like to see for, I mean, this is her hometown. But that's Di Bernardo, like, has barely left, like, the state of Illinois in her, like, life. Um, she went to University of Illinois. I don't mean that in a bad way. But she lived in Naperville. She went to University of Illinois and then in Champaign and then moved back to Chicago to play for the Red Stars for the entirety of her career since she started as a pro. So I think those are, like, it, it would be great to see her get a shot to – come back on her home field and get, uh, you know, the reception that she deserves from the Red Stars fans um, that will hopefully be in attendance <laughs> at this game in Bridgeview. Um, but, uh, you know, I think it's, it, I, does she get 30 minutes? Maybe I could see that. It would be good to see her come on uh, and get her first time actually in Chicago. That would be a nice little mm-hmm. storybook tale for us to to weave next week um i do hope that she gets that time hope uh hopefully she comes back to what she was before Mm -hmm. yeah Uh, not really knowing what her true injury is so yeah yeah um mallory weber too also has looked increasingly good um as and potter touched on her being really close to getting back into the mix for minutes again um so i I, I don't I don't think this week for her, but I mean in the next two week two three weeks maybe wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, I'm actually a little bit surprised it. It, it it's always hard to read exactly what Mr. Potter, Coach Potter, is saying or, mm-hmm. or meaning to say. But I do kind of I kind of got that feeling like yeah, it wouldn't be this week. But she looked so good in training, I wouldn't be adverse to seeing her come off the bench for a little time. Yeah, you know, I think, back, but... and I think too. You know, I don't like you said. We don't know what Di Bernardo's injury was. Um, it can't have been terribly serious, given the fact that she finished out the year with Chicago healthy, um, and then just kind of missed the start of this year. And you know, Desi finished out the year with the current and had a major surgery. Of it seems like relatively major surgery and probably won't be back for at least another month, if not two. So I think it's one of those where like I Vanessa's injury doesn't sound like it was terribly serious, which is good. But I think Mallory is in a different place coming off that uh, ACL, uh, the full ACL tear that she sustained in Portland. And I think it's one of those that you still really have to be cautious with, given the fact that she's only been in full training for, you know, maybe three by the end of this week, it'll be three weeks. So, yeah. The uh, let's see other injuries. Uh, Morgan Gatro still, still haven't seen her doing anything. Uh, Desi, we've seen her walk out a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, E ball, we've seen her come out. Yeah, we to saw walk her training. walking out and working out and walking out. Um, she waved at me from the training room today. That was kind of funny. I was waved back <laughs> um, as we were trying to figure out who Alex Loera, what Loretta was. Um, and, uh, and then uh, what was who else? Uh, Hammy. I didn't see Hammy at all today. Uh, oh. e- 
Elizabeth was the only one who came out of the like trading room though to the field at any point today and sometimes at least two or three of them by the time they finished their workouts come out um did not see hannah hannah glass on the field in any capacity today no. but she who knows where they're at within like the week of progression because she's been doing stuff that was similar similar to what mallory was doing uh like you know for the last couple of weeks outside anyways with doing ball work and stuff like that so yeah it's uh i was gonna mention that we've seen her running and doing some ball work not as much as mal has in the last month i would mm-hmm. say she was probably that a month behind yeah but that would uh that would be some interesting outside backs though wouldn't it yeah they got a lot of them yeah they do <laughs> um yeah chicago right. this weekend i'm gonna be there enjoy bridgeview i mean i'll be enjoying uh, i will enjoy covering the game i will not enjoy physically having to be in bridgeview (laughs) illinois as someone who went to college out there bridgeview's not great um but i i do look forward to getting back to the area excited to hit up portillo's excited to um i don't know if i'm I'm not a big chicago pizza guy but portillo's chicago hot dog Italian beef that sounds sounds pretty good to me and I guess maybe hopefully for the current for their sake a, a current W that would be good uh, uh even a draw would be at least a, a progress at this point a a win for soccer in Kansas City would be massive regardless of one of the freaking teams one of these teams SKC2 <laughs> man SKC2 has not oh I was gonna say they have not lost yet no they they did but they're one one and one right they got an actual win last weekend. They did. All right. But yeah. The uh, How Chicago. Would you line up? What's that? Sorry. Oh, okay. Go ahead. You, you're the host. You you answer the questions. I'll stop talking. Uh, it wasn't a question as much as just <laughs> say Chicago. We we already touched on it. Lost Mallory Swanson. Yeah. Uh, very very bummed for her. Always happy that the current don't have to face her, but at the same time, very bummed for her, for Chicago, and for the national team and. Uh, she's yeah. played so well the last year with yeah. her, with her with so uh, Sophia Smith coming back healthy. I know Vlaco was pretty much uh, building a uh, the the offense based off of those two playing wing and mm-hmm. trying to destroy people, and that's went to heck. Yeah, and uh, I think it's it's hard too for Chicago because I. They don't have a ton of attacking talent outside of her. Um, she was the attacking force for them, and she's a, she's a player who can carry your attacking force for the entirety of the season. But um, you know, I think it presents a really big question for that team of how dangerous and how unpredictable that they can actually be. And I I don't know that they can be uh, enough to. Um, especially this week um i'm curious to see what it would be like because i i don't this is a this is a very it is sad for mal swanson but it's a prime opportunity for the current to go get a result on on the weekend um yep. and i think it fell nicely into to their laps so they need to go do something with it and you gotta think that uh gabrielle robinson is a little bit happy not happy yeah. not happy i should say but no, mildly relieved well he's... relieved 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 is probably a big word she went they did it with caroline sophia smith and mal Pugh, uh in her first three professional games um yeah he, <laughs> well he, mal swanson he, sorry uh what couldn't script that to... worse for a, a, a poor yes. center back there yes uh, goodness but yeah so I, again i didn't want to put like you know saying that she was thinking bad things there because i don't know her well enough to actually know that but i don't think so so anyway, it's going to be an opportunity, like you said, and not having to face that talent. You yeah. know, probably game plan it a little bit different. Mm-hmm. All right. Anything else we should cover? Are you lighting up? How would you line up with this current with this current current? Uh, I with knowing the amount of center backs that are available. Yeah. 
I mean, Gabriel Robinson and Weinbrenner, two center backs. Not thinking of anybody else really. You got Mace Delfaba as true outside backs, but I don't really love either one of them as true outside backs. I prefer them as wing backs. Mm -hmm. uh, you can obviously slide Izzy in there. Midfield. Char, Low, Dabinia, Front, Spanstra, Mimi, and Michelle. Did Wait, I miss where's anybody? C where's CC go? Off the bench to score three goals. <laughs> oh. I don't like CC in the midfield, man. So I, I, she needs to be a forward. Yeah, I agree. Um, I. I'd be curious to see this if if they are interested in doing it. Um, so I th I I think I would actually go personally. I'd love to go for them to just go back to the back three, um, but I know that's not possible. Uh, I, would say, I would say it's not possible, but I don't see them putting all of their center backs out there. Uh, all at once um so maybe jenna and gary gabrielle again um i could see yeah they'd have to probably go haley at left back and uh kate at right um and then in the middle you would probably do low char and dominia the attack though that's probably where i would actually go i'd probably go mimi on the left um Michelle at striker and kind of doing a uh, maybe even kind of dropping in deep to help a little bit um, like she was and they were getting a lot of joy in her doing that. Um, it, you could do Mimi on the left or you could do Michelle on the left. Go Michelle left, Mimi nine, and then CC on the right. Um, it, you could do, and that, that could either be a four, two, three, one, four, three, three, however you want to do it. Um, the other oper the other thought I had was uh to put Izzy at left back actually for the sake of service since you lost set piece service um with losing Luetta. Uh Izzy's got fantastic service and off the left foot, which is tricky for goalkeepers to read sometimes. Um the opposite spin. So maybe Izzy at left back and maybe actually push Haley Mace higher up the field like they would in a late game situation. Um and just start with that and just have Haley Mace Mimi Larson and Michelle Cooper and Dabinia running hard at Chicago's back line um, and saying, figure out how to attack us because we're just going to be all over you. Um, that'd be something I'd be interested in saying too. Um, I think my preferred formation with this team right now still would be a back three, but uh, I think Potter's going to try and stick to his back four thing. And the center back issue is uh, a, um, a depth issue that you probably just don't want to keep exposing more and more. Uh, they have had a trialist a center back trialist out there yep. um, the last couple of weeks. We have not learned a name. I don't know if she will be signed or not, um, but uh, somewhat held her own in training. Yeah. It looked pretty decent. I mean, yeah. not what I would consider probably a starter, but who knows? Yeah. And we don't always, we don't always see players on their best days. We <laughs> sometimes see them on their worst days. So mm -hmm. we got to always take that into account. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually started to go down the the Haley Mace as a as a winger earlier when I was talking, but I knew you'd mentioned that today, so I, I was going to let you do that one. Oh, thank you, Thad. I know it was very special, <laughs> wasn't it? Uh, we talked to Mimi today, and I I would actually like to see her at the center forward spot. Um, yeah, I know it's going to be like, do you play Michelle there? Do you play Mimi there? I would like to see Mimi there and let Michelle be a winger for a little bit too yeah i think that at time where actually michelle found the most joy i think in the last game was when she did pop up in the wide areas and yeah. was able to drive at players and she played the those perfect passes the the one left hand side she gets in gets in behind becky has to take her down or someone else took her down because she burned becky sour run and then they time for that she got all the way in and played the square ball that nobody finished and another time on just before kaiser's headed goal 
she was out on the right hand side of the of the buildup and like put in this perfect little teasing lob to the back post that I just don't think CC got there in time to put the right header on it and headed it wide. But those were moments she has found her best moments in wide spaces. And I think for a young player that's still trying to learn her way in the league, it might be a good place um, to put her out despite the fact that she could play centrally um, and probably in the future will be a little bit more central in how she plays. I was while you're talking, I was trying to think of how I could do a four, four, two or a three, five, two with uh, Mimi and Michelle, basically the, the dual nines. Mm -hmm. Uh, That would be so tough. It would be tough because you're dropping Geyser to the bench and then you're relegating another person out of the midfield, most likely, unless you do the three, five, two. Right. Um, But then you're risking center back depth. Thank goodness this is not my decision to make. And there's someone else who gets paid to make that decision and probably will make it better than I would. So, Well, it depends on where he's at on his journey. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. All right. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Tune in. Uh, this has been Thad Bell from Kansas City Soccer Journal at the back post on Twitter. Daniel Sperry, what's your Twitter? At Sperry Daniel 94 Okay. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I, I don't Kansas remember City Twitter so- handles. I don't care. That's okay. I I I barely remember mine. I don't know. I can't change it until Alon takes my blue check away. So we'll see what happens. You can take it away. I could, but then I he hasn't taken it away yet. So all right. Again, thanks everybody for listening. And we are out. Mm-hmm.